What's up, Devils? J Dog back. 6 a.m. Goddammit. Here in my fucking uh, office at Hell's. And today we're going to be fucking going over some more goddamn devil comments. Proper goddamn 69 comments on Does J Dog know any criminals? Oh, actually, I didn't proofread any of these whatsoever. Just drag it, drag it up, do my second video for the fucking day. And uh, I, forgot, I forgot about doing this video, so there might be some juicy good shit on here. So we're going to fucking see, because I talked about that. Canoe, Raphael Greaves. And God, do I not miss that motherfucker. Ben, Ben NG. Oh, for, yeah, very first comment, it's a goddamn question. I've been hoarding physical media since the mid-90s, and I own over 5,000 albums. Yeah, you got me beat, bro, bro. At what point does this passion turn into a problem? Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, uh, I, you know, here I, I could answer that actually pretty easily, though. Um, I don't think you got a problem, man. It's a problem if you're neglecting the shit you have to do for, like, whether yourself to survive, or um, like neglecting your health or neglecting your family. Like, let's say you have a wife and kids, and they're fucking eating top ramen and just fucking barely getting by and drinking goddamn water of a faucet because you're broke as fuck because you're spending all your money on albums. I would say that's a little bit of a problem. Or if you're getting uh, threatened to be kicked out of your fucking house, your uh, apartment, because you're not paying your rent, because you're buying albums, that's a fucking problem. But if you're paying all your bills, you yourself, you know, your, your health's in check, you're walking out, taking care of yourself, taking care of whatever family, the responsibilities you have, and um, you have extra money. And hell, if, you, if you're buying albums, plus you're able to still put money away in the bank, which is what I recommend, that you always... You should always put away, in my opinion, minimally at least a hundred bucks in the bank, fucking every every month, right? You know, it's that, some type of savings because for a rainy day you're gonna need it. Something's gonna pop up. You're fucking you're gonna need a new car eventually. Fucking wheels in your car are gonna fall off. Whatever. So the more you can save, the better. But I mean, minimally, my motto ever since I was uh, thirteen, I've always saved at least back then. I mean, I put, put more away now, but at that time, it's just at least a hundred dollars a month. And compounds and compounds and compounds as the years go by. So, anyways, if you're doing that, especially and you're buying albums on top of it, you got no problem at all, man. I think that's the fucking cool. So, it's what my hobby is for the most part. The only two hobbies I have is uh, collecting metal and uh, bodybuilding. The only two things I have. And there's times when you start to, but I think everybody goes to this, you know, whatever your hobby is, whatever, whatever it is, whether it's like cars, you know, collecting sneakers, fucking you're a basketball player, you know, just go on your place. You might start to question when you're doing it for years and years on end, like, why am I doing this? Is this a waste of time? The way I see it is nothing is a waste of time if it actually truly does make you happy. If you enjoy it, fucking keep on doing it. Again, as long as all your priorities are taken care of, keep on doing it. I mean, what's wrong with collecting shit? You got, it's keeping you busy. It's keeping your mind. It's a hell of a lot better than fucking, you know, going out, you know, uh, blowing coke, fucking smoking meth or shooting heroin. Better hobby than that, right? And um, and it's just fun. And, and my whole thing is too is like, Let's say you said 90s. I'm assuming you're probably a little bit older than me. You're, you're probably like, let's say you're 40, 45, somewhere around there, as I'm guessing. Uh, let me know if I'm correct on that answer. Probably a pretty educated guess. When you're 60, 65, 70, let's say you're retired and shit. Look at all these motherfuckers, dude. Like when they're, they're um, a lot of them are grandparents like that. They're completely miserable for the most part when they're retired because they got nothing going on. Literally nothing going on. They're sitting on the couch, fucking maybe sitting on the front porch, drinking a fucking crappy Budweiser, watching the cars go by because they literally have nothing going on. Um, now you will, like, you'll have all the time. You can go back, you can, like, listen down. Oh, fuck, I forgot about this one. I haven't listened to this in 10 years. Put put your fucking feet up. Um, listen to it, read the lyrics along, get to know it better. It's a good, cool fucking hobby. It's a cool fucking healthy hobby. And if, and if you enjoy it on top of it, um, nothing wrong with that, man. I think it's one of the best fucking hobbies to have because, like, certain people, they like collecting, like, baseball cards or stamps and shit like that. I'm not going to say that even that's a waste of time or anything if it is making them happy. Um, but I think, you know, collecting records and shit, that's even cooler because in a sense you're doing the same damn thing. But instead of just flipping through a fucking uh, album, you know, looking at stamps or cards, you can do that, flip through them, and you get to listen to them at the same time. Killing two birds with one stone. So it's a really cool, easy hobby. And like, uh, yeah, but, but you can always, you can justify anything, anything, the type of hobby or whatever, as a waste of time. Anything outside of just pure survival, you could justify as a waste of time. So it's like, but what, so what, 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 why is it a waste of time? Like, even if you live to be 100 years old, you have an expiration on this fucking uh, planet. The way I look at it, I'm living on borrowed time. We all are. You're going to die eventually. So if you're 45 years old now, and if you die at 60, 70, 80, 90, again, if you make it 100, you're still on borrowed fucking time. You're going to go. That time's going to be here before you know it. So 
what, you're just going to survive? You're just going to like, literally like, let me make sure uh, my rent's paid or fucking my, my food's on the table. That's I'm getting by or I have money on the bank in case fucking shit hits the fan, but you can't take that money with you. I, yeah, I save money and I'm big on saving money because a case, a case of an emergency, but at the same time, I'm enjoying my life at the same time because who cares about existing? Because that's all you're doing and with the people that live like that. You're literally, you're not living, you're existing. And your expiration date's going to be here before you know it. So why not enjoy your fucking life? And I don't believe in no silly ass fucking afterlife and shit like that. If you do, then fucking hope you're right for your sake. If you're a miserable on this fucking planet, because the way I believe in it, there is none. You have one life. You lived it. So do what makes you fucking happy. If that's fucking playing baseball, play baseball. If that's going swimming, go swimming. If that's having 10 kids and grandkids and that's what you enjoy, then fucking do that. Just make sure your goddamn bills and priorities are paid off, paid every month and uh, probably have a little uh, schadol to uh, put in the savings account at the end of everything too, and then do your hobbies. You'll be good to go, bro. bro. You have nothing to uh, worry about if you're in that category. As far as I'm concerned, man, you got the coolest fucking hobby in the fucking world. And 5,000 uh, pieces of music, whether it be CDs, LPs, cassettes, is pretty fucking impressive. And that's definitely got me a beat. They don't have to put between... Uh, I'm probably, actually, I might be pushing five between CDs... LPs and seven inches, I might be right around five thousand myself. Somewhere, somewhere, probably just under, but somewhere. Yeah, I would say not quite five thousand, but close to that. Even brisket, god damn it! Haven't seen you in a while, bra bra. Uh, just place an order, I dog. Everyone needs to pick up that gouge CD for three three three. I think we might be sold out of them now. But yeah, that gouge. If you didn't get the gouge album, the se the seven inches is even better. The demo might, but the album is great. Uh, you're missing out, my dad. I think that's a great fucking death metal, like a modern, I maybe mean, it's like five years old now or so, but a few years old now or whatever, but, um, but modern, in my opinion, great modern death metal record. And I don't just say that because Hell's put it out. If I think it's ant or whatever, ask me anything about Hell's release, I'll give you, I'll like, yeah, I didn't really like it. Yeah, that was kind of a chase release. I'll tell you. I don't fucking, I don't sugarcoat, I don't bullshit. I'm not here to sales pitch you. I just fucking shoot the shit with you guys and do what the fuck you will with it. Stern. Sup, J-Dog? What are your thoughts on Thy Feeble Savior? I ordered their full length from HH last year, and it was, was one of the best blind buys I've had in a while. Fan, fucking fantastic record, in my opinion. I like it. I'm not huge on that style. Um, so it's funny because so by Thy Feeble Savior, I'm like, yeah, it's good. And so, the, you know, the Blast Me, more Vasadad, Arch Goat, that type of st style, uh, which I'm not huge on that, but I'm like, yeah, that's good stuff, and I was entertained. But uh, actually, it's funny because as you guys saw, I did that uh, podcast with Francisco. I need to do. I gotta, be, dude. I've been so fucking busy lately. I hope Francisco doesn't think I'm this fucking doorknob and a half. I've been meaning to contact him. Like, hey, let's set up for this Wednesday or next Wednesday. And every fucking week, something's been going on. Uh, just went to Malone Creation. There was the fucking Easter bullshit, which I got double hammered. Fucking two two weekends, not just one weekend for that fucking fake piece of shit in the sky. Don't even want to get into it. I got, got double butt raped on it. Not just one Sunday, two Sundays, goddammit. it. So shit all the time. And uh, then I got really behind that videos where I completely ran out and I had to take a whole day of cranking them out. And then I, it's so a ton of shit. So I, I, but I've been wanting to do another podcast. And the was like, yeah, just let me know when you're ready. So I feel like that fucking now. Cause when I say I'm going to do something, I'm kind of like, I kind of like to consider myself a man of my word. If I say I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Uh, but anyways, I'll uh, do the uh, podcast with Francisco. I like Francisco more as a person than Die People Savior. Uh, I do like the Five People Saver stuff, but what I really liked, and he sent me their fucking sandwich, I loved it, was the uh, the Cemeterian um, set, uh, demo on seven inch. I fucking loved it. He sent me that and uh, a couple other, uh, and a disc to check out of his buddy's band, but uh, but but Francisco plays guitar on it, on the demo, and i huge fucking fan of that. So I liked the Five People Saver. Yeah, it's good, but the Cemetery, I, I was even more of a fan of that. So check that out if you haven't heard it. I couldn't find the seven inch anywhere. That's why Francisco sent me one. I'm like, dude, I'll like just, just like, I want to buy one. I don't care who has it. Like, I don't care. 10 bucks, 15 bucks, 20. I don't give a shit what prices. I'll give you 20 bucks. Post is paid out. 20, 25, even 25 bucks. I don't give a shit. Just give me to me, like, just send it. I, was, I just want to have one. And nobody, I couldn't fucking find it anywhere. Not even on eBay, nothing. And, uh, so yeah, I'll just send you one. I'm like, oh, sweet, man. Send me your PayPal. I was like, yeah, no, don't worry about it. So it was fucking awesome. And uh, I've already played it like three times since I, uh, he sent it to me. I, I fucking love it. John Lincoln, uh, he's not really asking the question, but he's talking about Ray. I knew Ray, a very strange cat for sure, when he was sober. He was crazy, dude, but when he was drunk, he was Mr. Hyde. 
You know what the thing is, is I don't think I ever hung around him when he was drunk. I already kind of walked away from him because when I met him, I was either 13 or 14. He was the very first person I met at shows. And uh, so you don't know anybody. So at the first time, the first person you'd be like, oh, fuck, someone else likes death metal because I'm in fucking 13. Shit, I might even been in middle school. there. Yeah, I think I was in middle school. I think 13 is middle school. 14 might be even too. Yeah, I think. When you start high school, ninth grade, and you're 14, 15, somewhere around there, maybe even 15. So anyways, yeah, middle school even. So nobody listened to fucking death metal I was. The only people I knew that did were my brothers as well. So nobody else to talk to. So when you finally meet someone, like, whoa, there's other guys that like this stuff. He likes mortician. He kind of thought he was cool. But as I got a little bit older, 15, 16, I saw how much of a fucking knob he was. And I kind of, uh, you know, I, but I'd still be polite. I'm not going to be a jerk for no reason. He never wronged me. So I'm like, you see him in a show. Hey, bro, what's going on? But it's kind of like, yeah, you know, it's so oh, cool. You know, you're cool. You know, and, you know, here to see the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excited to see fucking whatever. D aside, cool. And I kind of walked away. So he wasn't drunk at that point. So I kind of say, I don't think I've ever seen him drunk. But knowing how much of a fucking jackass knob he was, uh, drunk Ray would be fucking probably times 10, right? Plus, I'm not like, dude, I'm not a fan of drunks in general. I hate that drunk shit. You know what I mean? Like, uh, Drunk motherfuckers just kind of annoy the piss out of me in general. I mean, there's some that can maybe be super, some that were like, um, it is kind of like, it reminds me maybe like my dad or something. Like, I don't think I've ever seen my dad drunk in my, in my life, but he, you know, he would drink, you know what I mean? Like have a couple beers a night and plus like when he had parties or something, he'd drink. So I had to have seen him drunk, but I think he's the type of drunk where it doesn't bother me because he's not some clown acting like a jackass. Like he's just maybe a little bit more talkative and that's it, but he wasn't acting like a jackass. Uh, which is most people act like fucking jackass. And I think I fall in that category too. I think I just get a little bit more talkative. I don't get mean. I don't get angry. I don't start bringing up the past and shit and crying about shit like some. Um, I literally just, um, I think I just get a little bit more sociable. That's it. Uh, but the annoying drunk, yeah, when they just start bringing shit up, they want it and just, just, just annoying us. I, I always hated that shit since I was a kid. So I can imagine that guy. I can only imagine because he was a fucking full blown fucktard, uh, sober. <laughs> Questions, questions, questions. I know they're motherfucking in here. Where the fuck they at? Oh, here's a pretty good one because it's kind of relevant for uh for actually just an email I got. Aussie Wastelands. Hey, Jade, all question. I know you did it, the the um reissue of the Star Six Six Unchained the Wolves. Did you ask about doing violence to the Prince of this World? You know, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> The reason I bring this up is because uh, KK he's he's uh he con he talks to Eric three email, and Eric sent me the uh the um the email me and Chase like for the deal and anyways he wants to re redo the uh, Devil's Due disc with the three seven inches, and uh, I specifically replied to Eric uh violence I didn't ask about but I've been wanting to do violence way before, but the reason I didn't ask about violence is because I saw something recently came out. It was on eBay or something. I thought somebody told me about it. It was, um, I think it was Ian Ravenscroft who told me about the, uh, I think it's a bootleg, a live LP from 1998, which I've yet to find, and I really want one. So if you know about the Destroyer 666, I think it's a Chinese bootleg, live 1998. I haven't even seen it. Don't know what it looks like. Uh, if you have one you want for sale, 100%, I'm willing to buy one. But anyways, I, when I was searching for it, I saw on eBay, I think it was up for 100 bucks, and I prefer not to pay 100 bucks because it's new. And if it was 20 years old, I wouldn't care. Uh, but I, I think I would break down, but it looked really, really nice. I'm pretty sure it was a picture disc of violence as a princess world, an outer cover, and like an OB strip. I think it was a double picture disc. Um, I, I, I would, at this point, I'm like, fuck the yeah, I'll just pay the hundred bucks. I, I, I kind of really would like to have that. But anyway, so that's why I didn't mention violence because it seemed like it just came out. I don't know if it's official or, I think it's official. It seemed it looked official, it looked really nice about the image I saw on eBay. But uh, I did mention to Eric that uh, what stuff I really want to do for years is, um, with the demo to the devil, uh, six songs for the devil, uh, on vinyl, and uh, then the three seven inches, uh, satanic speed metal, king of kings, and a wolves woman of war. Some of my favorite seven inch vinyls of all time. I know it's gonna be on devil juice. I want to do a seven inch picture disc of each one. Told him to mention that to KK. Did he? I don't fucking know, but it was an email. God damn it, I said it. So if he didn't ask, he dated me, or maybe he asked and KK and said no, but I don't know why. KK, I don't know why he would say unless he there's another offer. Uh, I don't, I don't know why he'd say no. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I love those fucking seven inches. This guy's, uh, yeah, a little bit of the, just information for devils, but I have talked about them before. 
uh, Versuvia Corpse Flyer. Attention J-Dog and fellow devils, look up this awesome old school demo ASAP. Insanity Demo 85, California. One of the heaviest and most intense demos of the early death metal years. I've been saying for years, dude, the Insanity, Insanity in general, even their full length, because we did their uh, first full length on vinyl. I don't, know if you know, I don't know if you knew that or not. Uh, uh, maybe eight years ago now? Somewhere around there? Yeah, something about that. It seems like 2015 or so, I think it was around. But the uh, 85 demo, wasn't always called Fire Death Fate? Uh, that's the main, the main song on there. That's one of my favorite demos ever. And I think that's the most, it might possibly be, I would say, the number one most underrated um, demos ever, in my opinion. The reason I say this is because <clears throat> for the time frame that was in, for example, like, we we're talking about the Sodom and Apocalyptic Raids and Toxic, I mean, yeah, yeah, Sodom, Toxic, Apocalyptic Raids, Hellhammer, all that comparisons. <clears throat> the bands are going to get passes just because of the years that they came out. And, uh, for example, another great fucking demo, which is great, like Necrovor, especially because of the time it came out. That Insanity, I mean, fucking 85. I mean, holy fuck. And that's when, the, that's the year uh, Seven Churches came out. You know, that's literally hanging out with right after, because uh, the demos by Possessed, 84, and the uh, Mantis demos were 84. As far as death metal, because that's what I pretty much consider. Uh, that's pretty much what I consider that demo was uh, just death metal, uh, 80s death metal, first generation death metal, second generation death metal. I consider like Cannibal Corpse, Deicide, Suffocation, but well, first generation death metal I consider death, possessed, massacre. He even kind of made me throw Hellhammer in there as first generation death metal, but uh, definitely possessed and um, death and massacre, and it always I was through insanity in there. But a lot of people they don't even know about that fucking demo. So yeah, uh, to me that's like. If you're in a metal, you absolutely have to own on some type of... And it's come out officially and shit like that. Like Matt Harvey, uh, he did that. That was the first official in a long time, but it's been quite a while, like well over 10 years ago now. He did a CD where it had like that demo and a bunch of other like uh, various songs. But um, and then uh, there was the uh, there's a, that Digi Pat, Digi Book version which the cover was stupid as hell up by the Chinese label, I believe it was. Because I have a few versions of, uh, of Insanity stuff, but it's all the same shit again and again. Um, but so it's not hard to get. It's on it's releases that came out, but you got to have it on a disc, a cassette. Um, oh, there's a seven inch of just, uh, that too. I own that as well. It's just literally on a seven inch by itself, the uh, 85 demo. So, but you got to have it in, um, some type of capacity. I think it's little, I think that is the most underrated demo, de metal demo of all time. And is one of my favorites. And, um, who's the guy, uh, uh, Joe Zignu, the singer on there. It's quite crazy. Like he sings on that. And I think he sings on an 86 rehearsal as well. And I think it's just those two recordings, the only thing with Joe singing. And I'm pretty sure it's on the uh, the official release that came out. I'm pretty sure it's on the Chinese release. I'll tell you, it's a double disc. It's, I, it's like this digi book. It's kind of cool, but kind of kind of not. Some of the pictures and photos and stuff, it, it didn't really look like match the band in a sense. Um, but I'm pretty sure the only other thing that the 80, I'm pretty sure it's a 86 rehearsal that Joe sings it. Because he died in like, what did he die of? Like a brain tumor or something like that? I forget. Or maybe it was a car crash. But he was like young. He was like 19, 20 years old. And it was like in 80, maybe he died in 87 then or something crazy. That's why he didn't say anything else. It's like, man, he got fucked. Died in fucking 18, 19, 20. Like, man, talk about fucking crazy. Uh, yeah, here's a good question because uh, I actually do have a pretty, I don't know, a strong opinion, but kind of a strong opinion about this. Little over 90, what are your favorite style slash color combos of vinyl? I really like the tricolor ones, Toxic Holocaust and Overdose, Overdose of Death, and Perdition Temple, Edict of the Antichrist. Life. So my favorite is, I mean, those tricolors are cool, but my all-time favorites were always the, the splatter vinyls, where you have a, a base, whether it be a clear base, a clear base uh, vinyl with, let's say, red, pink, white splatter on it or whatever, or a clear red base with fucking uh, black splatter on there, you know, like the Evil Incarnate we did, for example, back in... Our first uh, vinyl release, uh, the first hundred were on red, black, and We had the, we did a non slaughter set next split. I'm pretty sure the first hundred or maybe it was two hundred. Green base with black splatter, splatter, but in general, splatter vinyl was always my favorite. I uh, I don't know, maybe because I think something in my brain when I first got into uh, vinyl, seeing like um, carcass and shit like that, and just splatter vinyl, and just like I don't know if this thing is splatter cadavers, <laughs> just like kind of like something in my brain. I just love splatter vinyl. I think it looks fucking awesome. So that's my favorite. Um, I do like a lot of those kind of like swirls. Like if you look up, like one of my favorites is the deceased blueprints for madness diehard version we did, which was, what was that? 2005, six, seven, a long fucking time ago now. 
Uh, the first hundred copies was on a green and like black swirl. We done others. There's a few inquisitions we did that were on the. Uh, I think they, the plant calls them swirls, but it's two colors marbled in together. Those are probably my second. Those are really fucking cool too. And then uh, my least favorite, as far as colors, I, I'm not actually. I, I, I would straight up. I don't like them. I'll say that. There's a newer thing in the last few years. Osmos was. We did a few ourselves, and I told Chase, stop doing these, man. I fucking hate these goddamn things. They're a pain in the ass to fucking see. And uh, but Os Osmos Records did a ton of them on there, like especially with the Marduks and shit. They're called Galaxy Vinyl. So it'll be like, for example, if it's red vinyl, it's galaxy. But you look at it like this is black, but it's all smoky and shit. It's so dark, it looks black. You have to hold it up to the light. Like, oh, there's the red and then the, and the black. It's what they're called. So there's a blue galaxy. There's all kinds of galaxies. And uh, but it literally looks like black vinyl. I can't even tell you how many fucking times I've gotten emailed in the service emails like, hey, uh, I ordered the color vinyl of, of, you know, those are the um light. And it's a uh, black vinyl. I'm like, hold it up to the light, brah, brah. Oh, yeah, you're right. And I'm like, yeah, because I thought they were stupid, because I thought the same thing. When I'm always, like, pulling a record, god damn, this looks like the black, and you hold up the fuck. And you got to do that for, let's say you sell 50 LPs of a title that just came out, it's like, it's annoying as fuck. I check each one. Um, it, just, it just looks like black vinyl, so I thought it was fucking stupid. So, uh, yeah, those are my favorites and least favorites. So, yeah, just that 21 minutes, god damn it, could have cut that off right fucking there. And, uh, yeah, that's it for this one, Devils. Leave comments, questions, concerns, you know what to do. Put it in there, get, get them answered at 6 goddamn a.m. as always. And see you in the next one. Later.